Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Miss B. Today I am very happy to be here with you with another beautiful practice with watercolors. If you're new to this channel, I highly encourage you to go back to my previous practice with watercolor from last week, the previous one and the previous one. We are building our knowledge and uh, foundations for enjoying this technique uh, to the fullest. So I really highly encourage you to start from those practices if you feel instead comfortable because you are already familiar with the watercolor technique stay with it there are two ways that you can use my video you can just watch the whole things and then practice at your own convenience or you can pause after instructions prep your materials and then practice together today we're going to paint some nice whimsical tree and we're going to kind of lose it up again using a little bit more water than usual and kind of lose the control that we want to have on the water and the control that we uh, established in the preview, the first three practices, right? So now we are going to enjoy a little bit what the water um, uh, kind of uh, it's able to create on our paper without thinking or worry too much about, about colors blending together and just really embrace the unexpected that comes with this beautiful media. For this practice, you need a watercolor paper. If you have your journal practice in your journal, if you have a loose pieces of paper, just remember after they are dry, save them together so you build your portfolio and you also are able to look, you know, through all the projects and see your improvement and compare and contrast the technique so you kind of uh, build your own practice. And uh, as I say, watercolor paper, uh, brush, one or two, medium, medium, small, cup with water, um, and the color, watercolor palette. Any brand that you have available, it is fine. And it doesn't really matter how small or big is your palette, because if you have uh, only primary, secondary colors, you know that you can mix them and create the tertiary colors. I have a beautiful practice that is probably my fourth uh, video something like that in this channel so you're more than welcome to go back to that practice when we paint the color wheel together using watercolor which is an extremely good foundational practice so that you can have it first and then you will do everything else so i'm gonna switch the camera so you can hear my voice and see my hands so we can practice together okay here we are with our watercolor paper ready if you have a journal like me use it otherwise a loose piece of watercolor paper or mixed media paper as i said before is more than enough so we're gonna just leave it white no sketch and we're gonna start with the watercolor this time we create like a always a, a sort of a natural and organic shape but we're gonna dip mm -hmm. the brush in the water even after taking the color and then really without thinking so much we're gonna kind of gently touch the paper and create like this organic shapes resembling oval stuff like that you can use different type of greens definitely at least the two a lighter and the darker and remember that after you scrub your brush in the palette with the colors i would like for you to dip it again inside the water and maybe you can even without taking the color again, just use what is left in your brush and dip it in the water and do it again over and over. I'm gonna switch green, I'm gonna play with several type of green. If you don't have many, remember that you can mix the yellow with the green to make it warmer and brighter. You can mix maybe a little bit of blue in your green to make it darker and more on the turquoise side. You can mix a little bit of white if you would like to have a little like more on a pastel type of green. So you're creating a tint. You can mix the gray to make it a little darker and dull, creating some tones. So have fun. And embrace the experiment. The was, what is important in this technique that we are learning is that we don't want to have too much control, right? There is no design, there are no like outlines. We really want to lose it up, placing these sort of abstract organic shapes next to each other. We're going to do some overlapping, but let them dry first a little bit, not too much, because as we say, we are kind of learning that you see. 
we're going to all start the overlapping and let them blend and let the water color and the water work their magic, lose up the control and see what happened, right? We're kind of a, embracing a, this more of a wet type of technique because we want to really try different way that we can use the same media, right? I want you to, at the end of this several practice with watercolor, I really want you to feel confident and able to understand like the differences between the technique and what can you get from one technique versus another. So you will be able to make your choices, right? And to maybe, depending on what you have in mind and what you would like to design on your paper, you will be able to choose a one or multiple technique because you know exactly what to expect from one technique versus the other. So we're gonna kind of, you know, have fun with this beautiful green palette. And by the way, I'm a very blue greenish type of person. So that it's definitely one of my favorite palettes. So just putting the color like this on the, on the paper, it's really, really an enjoyable, uh, activity, something very, very relaxing. So I hope that you are um, feeling the same. And we're going to do with the darker green, darker and colder. Remember to dip the brush in the water once again. We're going to overlap. And you see what happened? Beautiful, right? A little unexpected blending. We create even more type of green when the two greens meet and blend. Let's find the light olive green. So I'm mixing some yellow as well. I want it very nice and bright. The background. I want to do one more here. Begin overlapping. Deep a little bit more in the water because I want it to blend. And now we're going to add the so we're going to start to turn this into something, right? Into something a little less abstract. Well, it's still not going to be realistic, but we're going to kind of start to work on the tiny little tree trunks, the foreground, and something to put in the background. You can play with your brown and remember exactly as we say, you can mix some gray with the brown to create some different tones. If you want a very dark brown, you can mix some uh, black with the brown. If you want a warmer brown, you can mix some orange or yellow in it. So use what you have, but remember that you can be creative. As you see, I am barely touching the paper, leaving a brush mark, so strokes, nothing more, honestly, really nothing more. I'm gonna work on my ground, and once again, you can have fun and you can decide if you still wanna have a green, if you wanna have some green and brown, if you wanna create a mix between the two. Make your decision also according to how dark or how light you want your picture to be. And as you see, my brush is extremely wet and I go below and around these trees. And I wet it again because I really want to barely touch the paper and I want to see the uh, action of the water. I'm gonna dark it up. See what happened. Nice. You blend it together. You see? You go between. Try not to go on top of the tree, of course, because they are drying. But if that happens, once again, leave it there. It's beautiful. Embrace it. I personally like the contrast of this warm um, yellowish brownish palette and the beautiful cold palette of the tree with this different type of green. 
You can also add the ground in the background. Barely touch. As we are learning now, um, you will get better and better in uh, controlling the pressure of the brush on the paper. It has to be something really gentle and really delicate. So it will allow you to move on the paper and in the spaces nicely and smoothly. You know, remember that is a sort like uh, the secret is the right combination between uh, uh, a little super light hand pressure and the right amount of water. So as soon as our brush touch the paper, we are going to see that action of blending happening, right? Now, if you want to frame uh, somehow this tree with something warmer, maybe in the background we can have some heels and we can use a similar palette uh, that we use over here. Maybe you can light up uh, the brown a little more, you can mix it with a light gray, or you can mix it with a white, uh, so you make it nice uh, and a little different from the uh, foreground, so barely touch. Uh, Trace your heels first so you know what you're doing and where you're going. And then you dip the brush again in the water and then very gently, with almost no pressure, you go and you fulfill the space behind the trees. As soon as you see that the brush is getting dry again, you are gonna dip again in the water. And this time, if you wanna add the, some different tones, you will dip it in a different colors, and then you will go with that. Gonna blend it, look how nice it blends, beautiful. And we're gonna do it here as well. I really love and enjoy the surprises that come when we blend the colors and the water just poof, let it go. We spread what we have. We go between the trees, behind them. If a little overlapping happens, we embrace it. And we do not to, we do not retouch it over and over. Sometimes the tendency that I see in students or in beginners is that they see a little like a blending that was not like a blend. They tend to retouch it over and over. But unfortunately, in doing this, sometimes we ruin the paper um, because we overwork it, right? And then uh, we kind of uh, take away the beautiful element of surprise for our, of our piece. So. I really tell you just don't overwork it. Embrace it as it is. Now I'm going to just add a little bit of water and a little bit of yellow. I want a touch of light over here. And I'm going to blend it together, overlapping, spread it out. And fill in the spaces and the gaps between the trees. Nice. I love it that we framed the this forest, so this cold palette into too warm. Now we're gonna do some blue on the sky. Once again, if you wanna go for a sunset sky, go for it. If you wanna go for a blue, dark or light, it's really your choice to make, right? Now you're feeling more familiar and more confident to make choices, personal choices about the color palette. Once again, Remember that is your paper, is your practice, is your time, and is your personality. You know, we learn a technique and we learn the rules so we can use them for what we need. To, and sometimes, honestly, we break them many times in art.
we embrace our style also, right? Sometimes when we start to practice art as beginner, we don't even know exactly what is our artistic style, right? So please experiment and do what you feel in that moment. And then when you work at your pieces, this is why I always encourage to keep them nice and neat and organized so you can see not only your improvement, but you can kind of understand something about you and your artistic style. So you will start to see a pattern, for example, in choosing the same color palette. So you kind of understand the better your personal relationship with colors, right? And so you will do the same with the media and you do the same with the technique versus another. So keep everything and always go back and observe. Do practice more than one. And Always be open-minded to see and embrace what is going to happen on the paper. Now, we are going to let this dry completely. So please, you know, make sure that when you touch the paper, it's basically completely dry and you don't have any trace of colors on your skin. If you have trace of colors like the watercolor, let it settle a little longer and a little more. And now with an extra fine Sharpie or micro marker or any extra fine permanent marker that you have av av oh, sorry, available, we're going to do some loose outline and see what is the difference between this design and the design that we did last time. So, so you can compare and contrast and then honestly do what you think is the best for you. What is the best technique? I'm barely touching the paper, as you see. I'm just doing a tiny little strokes. Instead to do them with a the brush, we are going to do it with a, a marker. So there is a little more control. We can add this uh, visual reference to branches. Once again, nothing too perfect, nothing too geometric. We're kind of using the brush just to um, enhance basically sort of a texture of the trees. This is not a realistic piece, so potentially you can do whatever. You can even create a specific pattern into the trees and see what happens. And the same technique of touch and go, touch and go, touch and go. Have fun, do these strokes in different direction if you wish so. They are really tiny segmented lines. You can do a little scribble on the trunk of the tree to define them a little better. Just remember the only recommendation that I have, let the watercolor set up first and make sure that you use a permanent marker, that's it. Even though if you use a regular one, if the watercolors are perfectly dry, no blending is gonna happen. But still, you know, I suggest you to be careful and pay attention to that detail. Pretend that these are like big leaves. You can do some of the veins basically inside. And even here, not 
try not to overdo it because we still don't want to cover completely, right? The beautiful, beautiful work that we did with watercolor. We want to see this nice uh, blended colors that we set on our paper. So we don't want to over uh, do it with the marker. This one is also a very, very nice way to support your fine model skills. So the fact that you need to barely touch the paper and be gentle and delicate, it's something that is going to help you, right? Now we can do some scribble, really literally scribble as you see, right? I touch the paper and I move it to create a sort of a cast of shadow for the trees and uh, create some nice texture uh, on the ground. Once again, we don't want to do it too much because we don't want to cover the beautiful watercolor. And we are trying something that started as similar as the, the other practice, the practice of last week, but we are trying to add another detail. So I'm giving you a couple of different possibility and you will be able to decide what is the technique uh, that you liked more what do you think uh, that you can get the, you can get the best result right that what is something that you might use to create your own artwork you see very segmented broken line uh, scribbling scribbling to create this nice optical illusion uh, of some texture and to make a difference I won't do the same texture over here but I will leave the background as it is so here is a nice nice little abstract whimsical forest and uh, let it settle let it dry before you close the journal or before you put the paper away I'm gonna switch the camera so we can say goodbye Okay, friends, I hope you had fun and this is our nice uh, practice of today, this whimsical small forest. And uh, we, learn, uh, we learn together once again how to use uh, the watercolor with no sketching, no definition at all, embrace the water a little more, use the brush uh, with uh, you know, a lot of water on it uh, and just see what happens when we move the brush on the paper and see what happens when the watercolors meet each other and blend each other thanks to the action of the water. At the end of this practice, we let the watercolor dry and we did some nice, um, very light uh, and undefined outlines and patterns. So you can compare this practice of today with last week practice. And I encourage if you didn't get a chance to do the other practice, make sure that once per week you dedicate some times to yourself so you can really, really build the strong foundations and feel confident and really happy when you use this beautiful media, which is the watercolor. I wish you all the, a great, great day and I see you very soon next week with another practice. Please consider subscribing to this channel and help this community to grow and spread the words if you like my content. Ciao a tutti!